Why do I have two output captures? Oh wait, it's just one. I thought it was two, but the video capture device confused me. God damn it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Danger Noodles, hello. Uh, I have something new to show you, as well as someone in my voice chat, who doesn't exist. I exist, you fucking idiot. Is everyone ready? My, yeah. my finger spamming power begins! <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot I had an 05 keycard. <laughs> As far as I know, you just add, you just do bits and it automatically activates. As far as I'm aware, that's how it should work. Bits. Because it didn't say to use any commands. <laughs> all right all right all right let's let's read this i would shit my paints in that situation if the heart doesn't fail me early of course ah uh, fair book well one thing is clear if it was a wild animal, it wouldn't be able to grab mom by the hair. You, did you forget monkeys exist? Monkeys aren't in Russia. Circus monkeys? Circus monkeys are not in Russia. You don't know that. Yes. You don't know if they bring circus monkeys to Russia. You don't know that. I'm very positive there is zero circus anything in... Well, they have things in Russia, but I'm positive they have zero circus monkeys. Did you just... Spood, did you just say that? Nobody heard what Spood said, right? Spood, say it again. <laughs> Thank you for not saying it again, Spood. Okay, first thing that appears. Oh. Hold on, Jerry. First thing that appears when I searched up Russian circus monkey or circus monkeys in Russia. Investigation after German party monkey appears in Russian circus. <laughs> Also, uh, Spood had suggested that... Spood said it again. I might as well say it since they said it twice. 
they were suggesting that Putin was a Russian circus monkey. <laughs> Oh, wait, you actually saw... <laughs> yeah, Bookworm saw that, too. <laughs> we both saw that at the same time. <laughs> well, why is there a German circus monkey? Why is there a it, German monkey in a... It's a German party mar monkey. Of course, I can't say the actual word. Oh! <laughs> Jimmy finally got it. <laughs> I love you, Jiri. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes you're too pure. I'm not pure. Yes, you are. No, I'm <laughs> yeah. slow. There's a difference. <laughs> yeah, and book says, yeah, it begins with, with N. <laughs> I know! <laughs> Anyways. Vitya. Vitya. He's not pure, just wholesome. Says book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to hit the button again. <laughs> Vitya opened his eyes wide and asked after digesting the answer. Where was the day at? He was smoking outside. When I heard the screaming, he immediately ran in. But one thing is weird, you know. What is it? We washed bruises in the morning, and and that noise is outside. It must be it. I think he had a fight with somebody, but he told us nothing about it. A pause made it its way in the conversation, after which the village boy kept asking his new friends. Is it true your dad is a mobster? Roman immediately felt awkward. Some of his classmates were bragging about their fathers being real mobsters. Usually they, add, they added gunfire and torture to their stories, and Roma never liked this. When they brought this topic, he did his best to remain silent. He changed schools, but his new classmate liked discuss, discussing those things. He's just a businessman. He has mobster friends. So it is true what they say in the village. That your mom's husband is one of those new Russians. No, he used to be, but not anymore. Roma was awkwardly trying to change the subject. And he never was one, if you think about it. He had mobster friends. They were doing some business together. Enterprise and stuff? Said Vitya, lisping heavily. Yeah, something like that. I didn't ask him much about it. Is it true that other mobsters are looking for you and you came here to hide? What makes you think that? Our great-grandmother is dying, that's why we came. To see her off. Ah, that's right. Said the village boy with compassion. It, it worked, thought Roma. It always works. Usually it works with stupid adults who are stunned with words which ordinary children do not use in their opinion. It means kids are overcoming something important. They have grown up too early and should not be bothered by those questions. But he was surprised to learn this worked on the village fool as well. That's called empathy, you little shit! <laughs> empathy! At least he won't ask about what he doesn't need to know. Thought Roman had changed his subject, giving Vitya no room for processing his last phrase. Sorry Where for do... calling Roma a little shit. <laughs> Where do you parents work? He's a lumberjack on rotations, but now he's drinking. After his free weekends, he'll go there again. And I'll be staying here helping Grandma. I had a change in Fia's face and effect that, that he had said a lot about his father and nothing about the mother. Roma learned 
talking about the mother would be unpleasant for him. A good lover. Should this guy start asking unnecessary questions again, I'll burden him with questions about his mother. Thought the monster's son deciding to pick a neutral topic for now, but it was too late. What about your mom? Asked Anya, who did not share the same insight of her brother. Oh no, Anya's at the age where they're gonna ask anything and everything. Uh... But she had an innocent talent to say aloud things people will prefer not to pronounce. She had very beautiful blue eyes, thankful, thanks to which people forgave her. Ma'am? She's dead. Said Vitya sad, uh, sadly. Then he smiled awkwardly and looked away. Hi. Jesus, Anya! <laughs> well, like I said, she's at that age. The age where kids are stupid and ask stupid things because they don't know better. Yep, that. You that... learn when you get older. She's not there yet. Oh shit, I accidentally left it on the trigger thing. Whoops. I kind of ruined your moment, bookworm. I'm sorry. Wait, what happened? So hold on, I'll do it for you. There we go. But yeah, the, um. The bit thing does work. <laughs> Thank you, book. T, I threw a knife. Asked Anya again, making her brother bend the, the brows and look away. That is how he usually behaves when his father scolds him. He sniffed, wiped the nose from his sleeve, and said quietly, Well, your great-grandma sent her to the afterlife. Jesus Christ! Oh, what? His great-grand... His great-grandma murdered the guy's mom? Oh! Yeah. Anya opened her big eyes widely and stared at the village boy. Omar forgot about his habit not to show his emotions did the same. Nonetheless, Anya asked Fia after a brief moment of silence. How? They did he kill her? Oh my gosh, Anya, why? I know why, but oh my gosh, why? I was very small. Why is he that age? <laughs> I was very small back then. Continued Via. I remember that mom got ill and couldn't walk properly, spending more and more time in the bed. She said your great-grandma was coming to at her at night to strangle, that she had a short time to live. But other people blamed the fever, and they said it was all hallucinations. I remember waking up at night and seeing a shadow at her bed. Someone was standing there. I was really scared, because this someone wasn't of our family. I called Dad immediately. He ran to her and grabbed that shadow with his hands, but couldn't move it at all. I was screaming with all I got. Dad was screaming too. Everything was so weird. He got paralysis after that and went to my aunt. I don't get you, said Roma confused. What made you think it was our great grandmother's grandma's doing? My father told me that it was hair strangling my mom. When he grabbed her to move away from mom, he couldn't move it even by an inch. He tried to pull her, but his hands felt like made of cotton. All the strength was gone. He started cursing and stuff like that. And then she disappeared in the air and mom was dead. And dad's arms hurted a lot. He could barely move them. They got better with time, but still. When he is at home, sometimes he wakes up and can't move the arms for an hour. How 
did she get into the house and now she vanished? Asked Roma, surprised. She's a witch, said Vitya, Thea, looking carefully at the house this porch belonged to, as if someone was eavesdropping on them in that house. He can do everything. She, uh, she can do everything. She entered as a shadow and left as a shadow. She has killed a lot of people. That can't be true. That's impossible. Roma couldn't, could not calm down. You mean you know nothing about it? Roma and Anya exchanged glances. Anya was looking at Via surprised, while Roma had first sides of Del on his face. But more than anything, he was shocked by the story and could not believe this was even real. The person told him about a witch who sneaked into their house and strangled their mother, as if it was not a family tragedy. What a scary story. I wasn't even in the game. Why did it do that? But Fia's face stayed empty and a bit different. As if he was not completely mentally healthy. That's and actually I... a coping mechanism. Uh, when you tell something sounding indifferent and of an indifferent face, it's kind of like you're detaching from your emotions the way to cope. Ah. Uh... But I would not expect Roma, who is a child, to understand the complexity of grief. Yeah. And I tell you, she was walking backwards at night from the graveyard. Where? Where? Well, to her house. Walking backwards, got it? Walking backwards with her arms crossed. She didn't trip over anything. She didn't hurt herself in the dark spider age. Well, why was she walking like that? X. Wait, that was Anya that it showed up. God damn it. Kane. <laughs> Axed Roma carefully. Because she's a witch. It was probably her magic. She had some strange visits from the forest. The old man Muron saw this. And came from the forest, entered her house as if it was their home and never left. Who came? No one knows. Probably demons. She has killed a lot of people. Never, never, and they had a fire doing a wedding. They said someone kept their old witch in the burning house, preventing her from leaving the chair she was sitting on. And she burned alive. She was killed. She she has killed plenty of animals, sent a lot of peop people to the forest, and they never killed, came back. She has demons. Everyone knows this. And the demons can do tons of work here. That's why she's stronger than, the, than the heal any healer. That's why she can't die so easily. When a powerful witch like her is dying... All her demons will keep alive as long as they can. Until she passes her power to someone else. That's why she's waiting for your parents to come. Well, I will say oh. this. Even if this game has some bad translation errors here and there. It has overall good writing when the errors aren't getting in the way. Yeah. While the siblings with empty faces were trying to understand what they had heard, Fia tried to change the top topic to the previous one. Is this your family's car? God damn it, wrong mouse button. I always thought that the new Russians have cool cars like in American movies. We, we had a Mercedes car, but Dad sold it and bought this one a few days ago. The sister bragged openly. Of course Ooh. she would. She doesn't know better. Right. Ooh. Mercedes. Cool. I bet you have plenty of toys at home. Yes. Continued Anya. I got a few boxes of dolls and, hu and huge Lego sets. 
Roma's got transformers. Transformers. They can even attack. Stop bragging. Roma interrupted his sister. I'm not. He asked and I told him. What toys do you have? Via got it got deep in his thoughts for a moment. I don't have stuff like that. Dad bought a bicycle last last year in a neighboring village and repaired it. Cut them wrong button. That so basically the only thing he got from his dad was the thing one thing Roma wanted above yep. all else and his dad refused to get him. Yep. Is that what I'm hearing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can. Now I too can repair it. What about toys? Can't believe you have none at all. Anya! <laughs> <laughs> Said Anya in surprise. No, but when I grow up, I'll be as cool as, cool as your dad. I'll too have enterprises, buy Mercedes, and not a toys for my kids. Well, you gotta. I get going at the business, but what's your business gonna be? Hey, let kids dream. <laughs> no. <laughs> While Fia was talking to his new friends from the city near the porch, adults were approaching the house from behind his back. Alec was in the front, followed by his wife. By his wives. Oh, he hi, has, Hatchet. He only has one wife! One wife! <laughs> Hatchet, you came at an interesting time. Hey, Hatchet, can you do me a favor? Mm. Can you look at my stream for a moment? And tell me when you're. don't have him look at the Russian translation error. No, not, dis not Discord stream, uh, Twitch stream. Oh. Um. I don't have Twitch open. Let's go. Yeah, let, let me know because I want to show you something new that I can do. I think Hatchet just woke up a few moments ago or something. Oh, sorry, Hatchet. I kind of, yeah. Well, maybe a half hour ago. I'm I'm still feeling like ass. Oh, no. I just wanted to see. I just wanted to see how well I could handle social interaction right now. That's fair. Are you sick? Yeah, I've been feeling really sick lately. Oh. Feels like a mixture of my standard uh, health problems plus some kind of virus. Uh, well, the new thing I added might make you happy. Uh, 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 Twitch, please, function. There. Yeah. Does it require sound? No, you don't have to see sound. You just have to see the video. I don't have to see sound. <laughs> I mean, hear the sound. You know what I meant. <laughs> I don't think I normally see sounds. <laughs> yes. Anyway, you ready? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, what? <laughs> yeah, you can pay for bits of throw shit at me. Oh, that's a key card. Yeah, that's a key card. <laughs> you can just. How the fuck does that work? You, you pay bits in the Twitch chat, and it'll automatically throw something at me. Oh, so anytime someone gives you bits, yeah. it throws shit at you. Yep. As long as there's a hundred or okay. more. Okay. Yeah. Reconnection successful. Okay, I think I know what's going on. I'm gonna turn that off. While Brett reconnects, I might as well tell you what this quote-unquote is. I'm back. Is. <laughs> but you can oh. tell him. I believe this is called Sin? The Sin. I, I told him what yeah, happened last night. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah, bas basically, basically, 
basically the um the few error where it said a certain other word instead of few. Oh, yeah. that that was obviously a horrible typo, but one we will never forget. Yeah, I wanted it clipped, but I'm not sure if Bookworm clipped it. <laughs> I hope that the people who made this realize they made an English error and fix it. <laughs> Probably I mean, not. I made a few in here, but oh my goodness, that that is the worst one. Wait, there's two errors in here. There's there's wives, like the guy has multiple wives, and the droop. <laughs> the droop. <laughs> right, there's more than one error in this. I mean, more than two errors, and you know it. You're just talking about the funny ones. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Hatchet. Huh? Why, why are you apologizing? Oh, I thought you sighed because of what I was saying. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, no. no. Alright. Anyway, I'll go back to reading this, but, uh, I'll obviously read it correctly, not with the... <laughs> really, Chew? Anyways, Alec was in, in front, followed by his wife, with some old ladies, including their neighbor Maria. The, the group also had a few men with tools and sticks. When Alec came closer, Fia stood up, looked at him glad, and greeted him. Hello. Alec blatantly stopped near the village boy, looked at him dismissively, and asked his son, keeping his eyes on the boy. What is this gutter snipe doing here? Oh yeah, what Alec is a hell? Yeah, Alec's a massive abusive piece of shit. Just letting you know. <laughs> you you didn't tell I thought you said you told Hatchet everything. Well That's I did. I I, I told him I told him that was mainly they about gave abusive me a... family. Yeah. They they gave me a brief summary of the themes. Yeah. Well, and then told told me the few thing. Okay, well, Alec is basically an abusive father that gets his son things he doesn't want while dangling the thing he wants over their head for, if you obey me, I'll get you the one thing you want instead of the things you don't want. Also, he literally, at the beginning of the game, got so abusive he almost broke his car just to make sure his son said yes and answered him immediately. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Chu <laughs> had the funniest way of watching ill will on someone from a content creator that Chu likes. May the first screwdriver you choose always be the incorrect one. <laughs> Roma's face became red, but his father failed to notice it. Roma, trying to ease the situation, started to answer slowly, hesitantly. He's not a gutter snipe. He lives nearby. He's a good kid. Get him out of here! father stopped him. What are you doing just standing there? Get up and, and get him out of here. Well, fuck you, Alec. <laughs> Chu also says, may you always awake to find Lego blocks in your shoes and socks. He cut out a bunch. Oh, Chu says, may you always awake to find Lego blocks in your shoes and socks. That's what Chu said. <laughs> well, why? He hasn't done a... I'm not saying that! <laughs> I'm not saying well, that! Let me just say, we all know Alec is a horrible, abusive father. Oh god. Just oh god. With it. <laughs> I'm not saying yet. Jesus Christ. I'm gonna... 
You know what? I will censor it. He is saying, are you slow or what? I was going to say, go. are you, I was going to say, are you stupid or what? Because that's also a saying. At least uh, what I've heard. I guess either censoring could work, but yeah. stupid used to mean a different thing. So I feel like it would be replacing one outdated thing for an right. even more outdated thing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read. Are you stupid or what? And I'll get that off screen mainly. <laughs> I don't want to keep that on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This game is allowed to be a category, but it has that. <laughs> I think he does being very smart. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think I am not in the right headspace for socialization. That's fair, Hatchet. So. Take it easy. We all love you. Get better. We're not going to force you Drink to do anything. Take it easy. Mm -hmm. Drink lots of fluids. Hey, Hatchet. Here's yeah, what I'm going to yeah. tell you. Drink water. Take medication. Eat food. Do it, motherfucker. Or I'll force you to. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, mean, I, do, I, do, I do that already. Oh. <laughs> That's just my daily routine. That's the most consistent thing about my days besides video games. Play more video games. I'm sorry. No! Don't play more video games. Focus <laughs> on getting better. Yeah. But video so. games make me feel better. That's why I said play more video games. <laughs> no play more video games. You'll get better by resting. You can do I both. Can do, I, I, yeah, I was going to say, I can do both. Okay. Play video games in your sleep. <laughs> oh my goodness, no! <laughs> sleep gaming. <laughs> right? But anyways, I, I hope you feel better, Hatchet. Yeah. Oh, meh. Have a, have a good night, y'all. Yeah, you too. Have a good day, Hatchet. Please get better. We love you. Bye. Thank you. When Alec was interrogating his son, Via took his bicycle got, and got out of there. Also, Chu said that they rate this game 1 out of 10 so far. Yeah, that's fair. Roman looked at Via going away and felt an extreme sh shame. The father came in closer and said with an overly disappointed voice, make sure okay I don't want to actually read a bad word I'm gonna wait and look at what he, Alex he says before say saying a bad that. Word there. yeah for now on I read what Alex says first then I say it aloud because <laughs> because okay. that last Alec line was like Ugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well just remember this game has good characters everywhere besides the dad and for some reason they made the worst character the main one that you're supposed to like. Yeah. Anyways. I thought my boy started started to be a big deal here. But I was to talking some to some bums and laying them near the house. So, wanna make friends with guys in rags? He ain't your equal. He's okay. You think a son of a local alcoholic? It's okay to hang out with. What if he steals something? Or hurts your sister? Gonna defend him too? What? Of course not. I'm not defending anybody. I'm I I'm just Why are you even arguing? Go to the house and prepare slippers for the guest. Where do I find them? Replied Roma polite. Hold on. All right, there we go. Reply. Now Rome is doing the zoom yeah. me out thing, where yeah. it's like, okay, just don't feel, be polite. You'll get through this, and Dad won't hit you. Replied Roma politely without any emotion. No idea. Are you the man of the house or what? 
find and bring them to me. Roman knew what to do. He just needed to disappear from sight for a while. The big commotion was about to begin. All the adults would be would be knee deep in it, forgetting about their tiny complaints. Saying to his sister that he would return soon, the boy decided to walk close to the yard. While he was doing his best to walk around the house, which was pretty hard considering the thick nettle, he could hear all kind of of voices coming from the house. In the end, a sound of a saw made its way to his ears and he became curious what was going on. He sneaked into the house and watched. What he saw surprised him. The sunlight was so strong that passing by men had to cover their eyes with hands. But the more Roma saw, the more he was surprised. Not only some windows had shutters open, they had their frames removed. One of the men was using his mallet at the windowsill of the second to the last shut window. You could see hands outside holding an old about to fall apart window frame. Anya was nearby watching the commotion with her mouth open. Hunch Lady was standing beside her giving directions with her soft voice. Didn't they say this was a bad idea? Like tearing off the windows and stuff. It was yeah. keeping the demons out. You, 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 you keep the windows up to keep the evil in. With her hand, she pointed at the last window, asking for someone to handle it. With the other hand, she was patting the little girl. In a few seconds, she was approached by Maria, who stared at her with big eyes. Those eyes resembled lakes. Together, they made a few steps toward a vintage dresser with mirrors and started putting on it with some sh shabby velvet bedspread. Now Roma recognized the old lady. It was she who was sitting the night they came at the porch, guarding it like a dog. The boy approached the sister and asked, What's going on here? Manya said that we need to remove the windows and dismantle the roof. That will be making a, a tallow. What? Don't you know? Oh, stupid. I'll tell you. We need this so Grandma can go easily since no one is taking from her. Go? Yeah, pass away. Manya told me this. Yeah, their, their names aren't part here, which is kind of hard to tell who's speaking. Did you know this? You learned this from a few minutes ago, and now... And now you're acting full of yourself. So what? By the way, what about the slippers? Shh, don't talk about it. Roma interrupted his sister, thinking about how he should change the subject so she could forget about the slippers and will not undermine his efforts. She could read his mind, she started screaming painfully. Slippers? Roma, I haven't found the slippers. Anya, you dumb bitch. Remember, she's at that age. Roma grabbed the, the sister, trying to shut her mouth with his hand, but he was bitten, and she escaped laughing when Alec caught her in, in his arms. Father put her on his shoulder with a smile. Roma shook, but calmed down free and freeze, trying not to show his emotions. His inner hedgehog took defensive position. Why is my cutie running around? Roma hasn't found the slippers. Scream. I just realized what's going on and that upsets me. What? Think of this. Do you think Anya is the golden child and the boy is the black sheep? Oh. He's the scapegoat. I want to do something. Hey, Bookworm, if you are here, should we have a cult of Momo? <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. Screamed Anya, having a hard time breathing because of the laughter. It's fine, 
said the father cheerfully. We'll punish him in the evening, right? Right. He can play with me the whole evening. We'll be done, my queen. Go help Masha cover the mirrors for now, okay? Oh no, I'm red and I hate it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, why did I have to... ah! Anya agreed and ran towards the old ladies. Father looked at his son and said, Why are we doing nothing? You've got to help. We're going to saw the ceiling planks. You must pick up the smithereens and stuff like that to throw to the fire. Got it? Yes. Okay. Let's go. Roma, Roma and Alec went to the inner part of the house where several people were standing. One man was on his knees on the stove bed trying to cut the massive ceiling planks with it with an axe at the chimney. There were tools on the floor covered in peeled off paint and sawdust. No use. Can't cut through here. The wood is half rotten but can't do anything for some reason. Do we really have to break the chimney? Can't we cut it, it at the edge, Manya? Asked the man with an axe on his shoulder. Punch old lady came closer and asked. Can't you hear, Vasya? What did you say? I think we should cut at the edge, no? No, you need to cut at the chimney or her sinful soul won't escape. Damn it. Vasya, we gotta... We gotta cut it from the attic. Or else you're... You gonna cut standing below the planks. Another man said. Yeah, try side for the attic. A voice from the crowd supported the idea. After tearing a little bit, the men decided indeed this way was much easier and the same Fasha, a man about 50 years old, took his axe and went upstairs. In a few minutes they could hear his steps. The ceiling planks were bend bending despite the man's efforts to thread it carefully. Little pieces of plaster were falling be off below the place he stepped on. Someone among the crowd called him, but he did not answer. After a minute of suspicious silence, they heard his steps going away from the chimney. A squeak of the staircase footsteps in the hallway, and now Fasha was standing in front of the crowd with an empty face. He was rubbing his ass axe and looking around awkwardly. A hunched old lady reached her hand to his face and asked, gently stroking his cheek. It's wrong, Vashya. Were you scared of something like that? The man wasted a little bit of time and said quietly, She's got a coffin in the attic. Oh! Just right at the chimney. Everyone was saying nothing. Manya broke the silence. Well... We need to take it out. That's good. We won't have to spend on a coffin. Since we have one. The men got less scared and agreed. As if they were ashamed of for fearing the coffin. Yeah, it's just a coffin. Let's take it outside. It's did, empty did after check all. To see if it was empty? I don't think so. Or not. Of course it is. What are you even talking about? I don't know if, if you think about it. It was closed. Hell with it. What are you afraid of? Of course it's empty. Let's take it outside. Or we'll be stuck here for another week. It's the Ark of, it's the Ark of the Covenant. That's what this is. <laughs> I, I don't think it's the Ark of the Covenant. If anything, it might be the Ark of the Demons. <laughs> Well, if you think about it, Indiana Jones, when you open the Ark of the Covenant, Covenant no, people no, die. No, 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 that was a holy light. This is not holy. This is not remotely holy. <laughs> Wait, has anyone actually opened Ark of the Covenant? No, because it's supposedly said in the Bible, if anyone tried to, they would burn alive! Oddly, that part of Indiana Jones was accurate. Damn. Well, it's supposed to be a very holy relic with God's voice directly 
probably in it. I would have to say, it probably has some potent powers if it if it exists in real life. There's one place people suspect it might be, but literally nobody is allowed inside, so... Right. Wait, then how does the place stay clean? What? How, if no one's allowed inside, how does the... How does it stay because clean? Because the people who own it can go inside it ah. and clean it. It has bodyguards. Damn. Anyways. I like Lucas, son, in order to stay here. We'll continue after taking the coffin outside. Okay. Said Roma, he stayed at the doorway, despite not wishing to go upstairs. He, s he stayed to see how they bring the coffin downstairs. After a long fuss, he could hear how the men were making small steps from the inner part of the house to the staircase in the hallway. Then he heard someone swearing. Shit! It's, it's heavy, as if it's made of wood. It is made of wood! When, when did she buy it anyway? She didn't ask Fia the carpenter or anything. He would, he would tell about it. No one else could do it in the village. Maybe she bought it from the neighboring village. Who knows? We can only guess now. Voices became louder, and Roma could see the legs of those who, who were receiving the coffin. It could either be heavy from the wood, or there's something in it. Possibly. Uh... Hold it tight. Little by, by little now. Almost saw a long coffin from a dark wood they were trying to carefully get downstairs. Dark wood? Interesting choice yes. of wood. Uh, there are woods that are dark and there are woods that are light. Yeah, it's an interesting choice of words. Uh, uh, type of wood. When it's a house filled with demons. Well, a dark wood doesn't mean anything. You have the wood means something if you know the tree it came from. Yeah. Some trees are actually uh, there are woods that are actually supposed to be more that are supposed to be better at fighting evil things than even silver, and silver is supposed to be better than gold. People like to make gold sound amazing, but not so. Alright. When the last, last men that remained upstairs started descending the stairs, a loud crack rang out. The things went so fast that Roma managed to only recognize soul frames. Clapped stairs, Dad fell from the stairs, everyone else disappeared in the dark of the hallway. The coffin fell on the floor. The lid flew away and exposed the snow-white interior. In the dark, something that looked like a cat-sized spider jumped from the coffin and fled to the old woman's cell through the open door. There was something oh. inside. A cat-sized spider! Oh, sure, that won't kill anyone! The father screamed loudly. Crap! My leg! Alec was sitting in the house, sorry, rubbing his sorry. ear fine, ru and rubbing his knee with his leg bandaged up. His w wife was at his side, wrapping his bandaged leg with a silk scarf and gently saying, I would consider you lucky. You could easily break something with a with a hat like this. I'm kind of disappointed it didn't break. It also depends on the stairway, because... Like, how, how high the stairs were. High enough where he probably should have broken his leg. Very sad he didn't. Yeah, because the only addicts I've seen... Uh, granted, like, they're really old homes I lived in. The stairs were... All, there was only, like, six steps to the staircase to the attic. So... So it's not. Well, there's some old houses that are actually very big, some that are very small. Yeah, I've only there had more had variations small. back then because you could make your own house. Yeah. 
um, the last house I was in before I left, it was made in 1845. Oh, oh yeah, it was a very old house. What? What Alex says next. Oh. Maybe I got a crack in my bone. Can't stand on this leg. Said Alec and wins to demonstrate his pain. That usually made his son feel disdain. Why? Because he hates his dad. Oh, I forgot what disdain means. <laughs> I thought that it was like, like he, he, he felt awful for a second. <laughs> then I remember what disdain means. <laughs> God damn it. It's showing that he hates his father. Right. And I fully, I fully understand him hating his father. Yeah. Dad's fake suffering invited for pity and fondling made him grind his teeth. But he was just standing there, silent, doing his best not to show emotions as usual. Well, this time oh. he rather thinks about the coffin outside. Old men said there was nothing strange about it, except that the fact that they had not heard anything about the old woman asking carpenters to make her one. It was normal for very old people to buy a coffin before, beforehand, they said. But the thought still kept the boy worry. The preparations had begun. They threw all the trash out of the house. The roof of the chimney was dismantled. Windows were moved and the house became as cold as the outside. All of the windows were covered. Maria opened all the stove doors, and Manya was carefully inspecting every one of them, mumbling something. After finishing this task, the old lady got up and brought white rags, which looked like something between towels and pieces of sheet and pieces of sheets. She gave them to to Sveta, and insisted she tied them to front door's knob. When it was done, the old lady asked her to do the thing which stunned Roma and many others. The old lady then asked two men to take a big old icon from from the corner and put it on the floor facing the wall. In its place, they put another icon, a, new, a newer one. The paint was was still not dim. It was brought by some old lady in the crowd. This was strange. And now Roma regretted that he did not manage to see in time. They have brought it almost, almost black an image of this icon in the corner. He was being tortured by his own curiosity, but understood clearly that he could not satisfy his urge in public. After dealing with the, with the icons, Manya took his mother's hand and led her to the cell. Everyone else followed them. Maria carried Anya in, in her arms and said to Roma, and say goodbye to your great grandma. You have just met, but a goodbye has to be said. Ah, uh, said Roma, buying time to pick good words for his answer. Maria read them. Maria interrupted. Let Maria led the, led him. Maria interrupted. So their, yeah. their grandma both read him and interrupted him. I think it's supposed to be lead. Okay. Yeah. Maria led him and interrupted him. Look at him with her big dull eyes. Tonight you'll be staying at my place. And tomorrow, God willing, Grandma will pass away in peace. A small procession went to the cell. Roma was walking behind them all with two men and he could only hear how the door to the cell opened and Manya started saying something with a loud and authoritative voice. He could not recognize her words but due to her unusual tone he knew he was skipping something very important and extraordinary. That is why he was carefully making his way through the people at the door. When he got close he saw Manya standing near his great grandmother and dancing weirdly and dance on one leg and then on another. She interrupted the dance to spin around a few times and said, It's Tan, Arisha. The dirt awaits you. Let a child 
falls asleep, you go to sleep in the dirt. You sh so you shall not be disturbed by the sun, by the sky, or the wi wind, by words. Jesus Christ! Fuck your daughter, you fucking bitch! Sorry. Go away, whore. <laughs> I'll get you even from my grave. You'll be spitting blood. Manya was interrupted by the witch. Everyone went silent in fear. The dying witch was lying motionless. Only her eyes were rolling like crazy, examining her guest. It felt like they were about to jump out of the skull. Meanwhile, Mania spinned around a few times more and said three times, Your words... Your words do nothing. Your words do nothing. Your words do nothing. S Stop clinging to the light. Go to your grave. No one will take your power. Your granddaughter refused. All your relatives refuse. I won't ask another time. Give it to me now. What? Oh! Oh, god damn it! Sure. Take a cart of cocks and a bucket of shit, if that ain't enough. I'll get you, bitch. One way or another. I'll endure anything just to screw you. You wanna wash away dirt with prayers. Die in the forest. Wait, I think I know. I bet that's uh, her daughter-in-law instead of her daughter. Ah. Uh... That's why she could be both the mom's uh, the mom's mother and, uh, and the kid's grandma. Uh. Oh, okay, that makes, why didn't the game tell us that bluntly? I don't know. Okay. Everyone, everyone turn their backs to you, Meusha, which means you'll be dying in pain, continued Manya. The doors are open. No matter how you cling to your bed, the wind will wash you away by the morning. The lion old woman rolled her eyes again and, and her gaze stopped on Alec who was standing in the corner and staring at the floor. He knew she was looking at him, but his pride prevailed. He looked her in the eyes. After waiting a bit, the old woman spoke. Why are you looking at me, dog? Bark while you can. Oh, gosh. What do you mean? Asked Alec, cartoonishly politely. What have you done? What have I done to you to deserve such these harsh words? Oh. The witch choked on her laughter. After, after all... After all, what's wrong with you is good. The old, woman, well, old witch freezed in place for a few seconds like a doll. Her eyes glazed over. Her almost father even thought for a moment that she was dead. He's not dead yet. But in a moment she continued, an even more bland voice like hissing snake. Count your days. You don't have many. Roma, together with his sister, was lying on a bed in a small room with a dull wa wallpaper peeling off the walls. A kerosene lamp on a nightstand was providing light. Maria was sitting in a, a bit further. Moonlight was coming through the window, and one could see the roof of a neighboring house. Of a neighboring house. Their house was with removed windows and doors wide open where their great-grandmother was dying. All of this worried the children. A lot of things happened in the last 24 hours. Things adult, adults do not ex usually explain to children. Oh, 
Welcome back. Fucking Discord bitch. <laughs> A lot of things happened in the last 24 hours. Things adults do not usually explain to children. They did not feel like keep sleeping, that's why Maria was trying to make them sleepy by telling fairy tales. But it was no use. The children always tried asking about the horrible stuff they had overheard. And of course, Anya asked the most. Maria, why are we forbidden from entering the forest? We, we have wild beasts like wolves there. They'll eat you alive. I'll hit it with a stick and kill it, and everyone who lives in the forest. The girl insisted. Why do we need to kill them all? Asked the woman, surprised at this. I'll just hit them with a stick. She will kidnap you or those forest men. Roman became interested in this conversation. The forest men seemed to him more scary than the forest spirit or wild animals, and he asked before his sister even had a chance to say a word. What do you mean by for the forest men? I mean the forest men, said Maria, moved her huge worry eyes closer to the children. They roam the forest and can kidnap anyone. Like a disobedient child? Roma asked this with a slight smile. Oh no. Roma, what are you doing? You're not only children. Uh, god damn it. I chose the wrong name again. Said That's Maria. Really supposed to be grandma, not. Yeah. Fucking hell. Said Maria with the same mysterious tone. They can kidnap an adult and an animal too. It happens to goats and cows that fell behind the herd sometimes. It even happens to travelers and hunters. They fear no one. They are not even afraid of Leshy, though he can drive them off. I used to go to the forest and ask Leshy or Saint Nicholas. To protect me from the beasts, from trouble, and from the strangers. The strangers? Asked Anya while her brother was in a little stupor. The forest men, we call them strangers, but people from other places may have their own names for them. We have a demon hill in our forest, and God forbid anyone gets lost there. Well, what will happen? Demons will catch them," said the old lady, emotions motionlessly. God damn it! And they can and they can play a lot of tricks on you. And if they fool you to make a deal with them, it's over. You are doomed. You'll suffer like your your great grandma. Was she too fooled by the demons? Probably. Who knows what happened? I was very little back then," said Maria, and started recalling things from her childhood. Is it true that she strangled Thea's mother at night? The girl kept asking. Maria started thinking about it, but one could read by her face that even if it was not the case that great grandmother had done enough of dirty deeds. Looking at the children sadly, she said quietly, People say a lot of things about her, mostly bad, but she has good deeds too. I can still totally picture that time. A tired hostess dived deep in her memories, sighed, and began telling her story. The winter was harsh that year, tons of snow. The blizzard was raging so strong you couldn't see anything outside the window. The sister of Ivanova got lost that winter. She went with her granddaughter to the neighboring village, but then returned by the evening. It became clear they were lost because their road went through the forest, but the blizzard was so strong. 
It was buried in the snow. You couldn't see the forest from a passage. Snowstorm it was. Maybe it was the demon's fault. Maybe the stranger's doing. Or they were just buried in the snow and died because of it. We had no other idea. We decided to ask your great-grandmother for help. Ivan Nova went, went to her. And he was just said that they were alive. But taken away. She gave her sticks and instructions. Wait for the next day. They won't die from cold or hunger. Just wait and don't tell anybody. You have to be silent. When the time comes, go to the forest and throw the sticks one by one. If they call back, go there. And throwing sticks like this, you'll find them. It's most likely that Ivan Nova told somebody not telling the truth to this day. She told us that somebody went to throw sticks and it's Spinder. Despite no wind that way. He spent her so much she barely returned. It was a miracle she came back alive. Your great grandmother sweared at her and said that now they were dead. It was a big quarrel. Mia went in the end. It was a he was a war veteran. He was the bravest among his family. And he knew how to keep his mouth shut. I don't know what she had done to him. He never told. But he returned with those two. Dead. But the weird thing was, they still looked fresh. He never discussed it with anybody. But once he was drinking with Fia, the carpenter, who was fixing his roof, he told him, I won't lie to you. I don't remember the details. Oh, hi, Adara. <laughs> I was just gonna play this game until you were ready for Apex, but again, my computer has been downloading Apex all day, and it's only at 30%. Wait, what the fuck? Yeah. Right? Maybe, like, maybe you should, like, let your computer download it before you play stuff. Yeah. On stream. Because I think, I think you downloading shit while you're doing is, like, making it download slower. So you think I should stop right now? You can like stop streaming and like let it download for a bit. Yeah, I think I'll I'll stop at eight, and then we can just sit in here and chat. Basically, okay. yeah. While it's downloading, hopefully it doesn't take long. <laughs> well, are uh, you gonna chat on stream or? Oh yeah. Uh. Probably not. I don't know. But anyway, um, Adurna, can you look at my Twitch stream for a moment? Fine set. Alright. How wide is that sound? Okay. You see it? One second. Okay. Ooh. I'm on your train. Are hey, you on my stream now? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, so you get, you get hit with like SCP shit? Nice. Yeah, I got SCP-05 keycard, a snake, a sword, a dagger, an SCP first aid kit, and SCP-012. Hmm. Of course he does. Yeah. I think SCP-012 is one of Adurna's favorites, I don't know. Because it's the, the blood note sheet, which is just a music note sheet that forces you to write in your own blood. 
Why would that be my favorite? I don't know. Cause I I just feared it it's would because it's music related, but it literally kills it's music? people. Yeah, it's music related. It's a never ending song of death. That doesn't mean it would be my favorite. I wasn't. I was. I wasn't sure. Right? Sorry. What? Why would you think the never ending song of pretty... death would be Adorna's favorite? To be fair, it is a pretty interesting like. Anomaly. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I'll continue on to the story until eight o'clock, and then we just chill. Okay. I won't lie to you. I don't remember the details, but he told that when he found them, they were sitting leaning their backs on a tree. As if they were put there like dolls. Both of them. Their head, head scarves were reversed, covering their faces. Arms at their sides like dolls. They were still warm. And that was despite the time they had spent in the forest in the cold. As if their corpses had been just brought there. And leaned them against the tree. And covered their faces with the scarves. That's how it was. Then we buried them properly. If not for Nyosha, there wouldn't even be even a grave for them. The children's faces were full of fear. Then they heard a man's voice from outside. The voice that more resembled a beast's roar. Then they heard swearing from afar, commotion and door slamming. And they realized the voice was coming from the neighboring house. A nervous silence went through the room. Anya hid under the blanket, scared. Roma kept sitting where he was, but could clearly hear how his heart was beating like crazy. And how someone was knocking on the door of his great-grandmother. It felt like a group of men was running around slamming doors. Maria got up and went to the window, moving the curtain out of the way. After looking out the window for a while, she closed the curtain and sat on the bed where the children were, trying to calm them down. Be not, my sweeties. You're safe here. It'll be noisy there, but here is fine. Sleep well. Roma was worried and said, said trying to hide it, tremble in his voice. Oh, no. My mom thinks... I won't fall asleep so easily if I just watch TV before bed. And now I won't even, I, I won't sleep even if I want to. Maria was sitting with the children talking about her childhood for a, a while. About how there used to be a lot of people in the village and how it used to be lively. About how he, they used to run in the field and help during the harvest. How they used to go to the pea field and eat a lot of pea, which made them almost unable to move. I, I know. I would just assume they meant the the vegetable. Yeah, because at first it makes me think of something else. <laughs> well, not vegetable. Uh, I think it's technically a fruit, but I don't know. Technically a fruit. Mm. It's like. Uh... Yeah. You're about to say something, Adorna? Oh no, I said peas. Ah, peas, yeah. How they used to swim in the lake and go to the forest to pick mushrooms and berries. Or how they sometimes they were afraid to go to the forest alone, even to the forest edge beyond the fields. Maria recalled that they used to say, Oh, Always have at least one person in your group who can lead you out of the forest. The same applies to life itself. The forest has plenty of berries and mushrooms to offer, but it's ro roomed by wild beasts and strangers. There must be someone who will grab your hand and lead you to the sunny glade. On this glade you will lay on the grass and give a clear sky a smile. Feel at the sun 
through your eyelashes and go home after enjoying that moment. There must be a person who can lead you out of the forest. When Roma woke up, it was dark and cold. The sister was sniffling polite, quietly at his, by his side. There was a commotion outside he could barely hear, but he did not find bravery in him to come to the window and check things out. The thoughts of why things were as they were worried him. He recalled Maria's tale and started dreaming about how cool it would be just to run around the field and swim in the lake, just like her a long time ago. She has no modern toys and most likely no TV. All of it would be cool if not for his father. He ruined everything. Was his city life with the parents perhaps just like the forest? A forest with its own berries and mushrooms, wild animals and strangers, and he needed to escape it. He would not remember what he had been thinking after that because the dream and his thoughts mixed in one. When children woke up, it was still dark outside. After finishing a tasteless porridge, they went outside to walk around the house a bit. Parents told them not to go anywhere until they settled their adult business. After it would be settled, they had to join the parents and go to the grandma's house. Night suddenly turned into an early mor morning. A sleepy Roma was harassed by a cold wind, and he saw the world around him in a new light. For the first time, he paid attention to the details of what he was seeing. Patterns on the logs of unpainted houses, dim colors of dead grass, leaves turning here and there. Rumor thought this was weird because he never paid attention to all this stuff. Did he perhaps mature in the second? It was cold outside and the boy had no idea how he and his sister should occupy themselves for a time being. Onya was playful as always. After a while, they saw Via riding the same bicycle with the paint falling off. After getting close to them, he jumped off the bicycle and greeted <sighs> his city friends cheerfully. His face had blush, and for the first time, Roma saw not kindness and empty in his eyes, but stupidity. Via was looking at Anya and asked some stupid questions to which she was giving answers enthusiastically. His brother was observing this with cold eyes, feeling jealousy for the first time in his life. Ron realized this and felt shame and disgust, because that what his father would do in his place. He felt nearly dizzy from the thought. A new gush of cold wind was like a painkiller for him. Anya shivered and Via was quick to hug her, protecting from the, her from the wind. With a careful animal, he looked at her brother waiting for his reaction. Saying he did not care and looked away, Via smiled, picked Anya up, and started spinning her around. Having the sound of the house doors, Via put it, her in his place quickly. The girl was screaming, insisting that the fun should go on. He smiled once more and said quietly, I'll come later if we'll play more. Do you have toys? Asked the girl naively. Via was confused by the this a bit, but smiled and answered confidently. I think I can find something. I sh I'll show you a secret place and you'll like it. Village boy smiled once more and looked at Roma friendly. You'll like it too. See ya. Later, said Roma indifferently, still carefully observing the world around him. His parents and Maria left the house. Alec was clearly in a bad mood. He started smoking and stared at his son. Roma felt his stare and even seemed he had eyes on his back. With those eyes, he could see his father smoking and looking at him squinting. After a few seconds, Alec asked, What? This dog came again? Roma looked at his father calmly and said nothing. God only knows what it daring science could lead to. God damn it, Ronky. 
But Anya jumped on her father, hanging by his neck, laugh and laughing. Alec put the daughter on his neck. His silence was interrupted by a loud laughter of the little girl. The family together with Maria went to the witch's house. Oh, hi, book. The friend and a few villagers, all of them were elderly, were again crawling at the doorway of the, of the, of the cell. The witch's body was not moving. Her eyes were closed. One of the old ladies sneaked up on the witch and listened carefully. She's alive, breathing. She said this quietly and gave an awkward laugh. Jesus! I'm not, I don't think I should say that. It's not the worst That's thing the character was upset. I it's think not, you can say it. It's not okay. I wasn't yeah, sure if that was a really bad word or not. No, it, it sounded like a slur or anything. Okay. Well, technically, it is a slur. Uh, it's just a disrespectful way to call old women. Okay. Oh, it isn't? Okay. I wasn't sure if I say it and you guys say, like, oh no, Bri, you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Literally, hag is just a disrespectful to call, a disrespectful way to call someone an old woman. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Alright, I guess I'll read it then. What an old hag. Wait, are you giving the, the old lady voice, that voice? Oh, this is an old woman. Whoops. Yeah, I thought it was the Alec. Checking the great -grandma. I thought it was Alec. So I gave Alec. I'm sorry, Alec's not the only asshole. <laughs> she has little time left. She's already passing away. But she managed to endure the night. That's something. Voices could be he heard from all directions. People were whispering and moving like ants. In a minute of all of them were in the hallway keeping droning on and looking around. What a mess the demon's done. Shut up. Don't call him. When Alec made his way through the crowds of elders, he saw chairs lying around the house and piles of new trash. He sweared loudly and kicked the stool. Despite the absence of windows, a damp and moldy smell was raining the house. After droning on a bit, the elderly went home. Alec, grinding his teeth, decided for a total cleaning. Throwing out the trash, Roma lost track of time. Cold air rampaging through the windowless house, and labor made him hungry. He was so hungry, he even desired a plate of the tasteless soup Maria made. He returned to the house after his mother take out trash trip and freezed in horror. There are a few men sitting at the table who, whose looks he did not like. A set of shady, shady sweatshirts, they had black leather jackets, clean shoes on their feet. Bald heads and smiles of their smuggish faces made them even more suspicious. They had tracked his father. Shiver run down his spine. His legs were like concrete columns. Trying to figure out his course of action, Roma realized he was the only member of his family in the house at the moment. Were they hiding? Or ignorant of the situation? It's his son. It's his son, Roma. A voice inside the table interrupted his train of thoughts. Roma noticed the shade in the, in the center. A skinny man in a black suit and a red shirt with an unbuttoned collar. A golden chain shined at his, on his neck. Dad! Screamed Roma loudly, knowing he had no choice in playing a lo local was useless. The men in leather jackets laughed, and the skinny one interrupted them. Shh! Don't be so loud, young man. We won't hurt you. We just want to talk. But no one is listening to us. The skinny guy stood up and leaned closer to Roma, inviting him with his finger. Come on, it's in our mutual interest. I don't think these are people looking for his father. Things... They're looking for his dad, yeah. 
either that or I'm thinking this is about the demon looking for a deal. Oh no. Yeah. You think that I'm nine, young man. And that we can't have common ground? But you are mistaken. We've got one thing in common. We dislike your father as much as you do. Yes, you've heard it right. Don't pretend you don't understand what I'm talking about. Roman was standing stunned and, and listening. If he had been in his right mind, he would have run away or come up with something. But he was not in his right mind. The ground seemed to be shaking under his feet. He was trying his hardest not, not to fall. Meanwhile, the man in the suit looked around and said in a fawning manner, Come on, I tell you, it's our mutual interest. We need to discuss it before your parents return. They're talking privacy. Where are they? Mom! Roma screamed in fear one could hear it through the entire house, but no one responded except the man with the jacket. Be more quiet. I told you they are away. And by the way, we don't mean harm to your family. We can settle one issue with your father without your personal approval. And this is true. But, take a look. The guy in the red shirt sat in the chair and pulled out a folder. Take a look. This is a full record. Roma kept just standing there, staring at his unwelcome guests. Bald goons were looking at him sideways with a smirk. The man with the red shirt kept saying his talk, opening the folder on the table. Here, you had beautiful toys, didn't you? Here are some really high quality transformers. Oh, do you remember this car? Yeah, I don't think goons were, would go around having pictures like that. Yeah, these are the demons. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They saw the one opening the abused child and took it. Yeah. Set the sleek guy in red and pulled out a picture with a f of a remote controlled toy car. A vintage Roy Roy's Roar horse, which Roma adored. How, how did you get those? The boy got really surprised, but his line had no reply. Do you happen to know where, you, where your dad got the money to buy all these expensive toys? He used to have a restaurant. Indeed, but why used to? Asked the same guy. Because it bur burned in an arson, said Roma awkwardly, realizing that this arson was probably these guys doing. Yes, his rivals. Burned by the rivals. Those were pretty cruel methods. I know what you're thinking. But let me tell you a thing. Do you know how your father with his friends managed to open a restaurant in the first place? Where did they get the money? No. Don't worry. I'll tell you. He, together with his co-workers, one of whom worked as a police officer, got access to the police database. He looked for solitary owners of big apartments. He oh, chose no. the right person, us usually a lonely elder without relatives, or just a loner person sometimes, and went to their house. They tied them and tortured until, until they agreed to sign a paper to gift their new friends their property. Then they called a notary friend and did the paperwork. After that, they would sell the apartment and have fun in the best restaurants of St. Petersburg. When they wasted all the money in a few months, they would pick a new victim and repeat the process. Again and again, they did for years. Until your father got a brilliant idea to invent the money in an enterprise. Invest the money in, in an enterprise, a restaurant where they could always have fun. Most of their victims gave up. 
Some of them tried to put a resistance and went to file a police report. But those were again captured by their old friends who quickly disposed of them. Take a look. The sleek guy gave the book a few bloody photos. Roma looked at them carefully. He felt even more dizzier than before. Either these are demons or these are cops. And I don't know which one's worse. I, I don't know either. <laughs> he had no idea what to do in a situation like this one. Demon cops says... Because Booker says both. Wait, definitely both. So yeah, demon cops. <laughs> what is going to happen? Are they going to kill him? Then... What is this even about? Meanwhile, the leader continued. We can see an old lady on this picture. She's got a nail and a vortex after she signed the papers. Your father did it, by the way. He cut the nail cup, fully aware of the, the that the autopsy would be formed by irresponsible pathologists. And it wasn't like anybody would think of a violent death. Another old woman died. Who would you think that she had died because of a nail in her, in her head? It must be internal bleeding, a clock breaking off or something like that. He can see your father torturing a famous... Here we can see a, your father torturing a famous engineer from St. Petersburg, Lech Electrotechnical University with an iron. A beautiful picture, isn't it? They say he was an excellent professor and worked on very, on a very important project, but couldn't finish it. And here we... Stop! Roma interrupted him. Despite the trembling voice, the cold gaze of the boy made it clear. Men mentally, he was more mature than his peers. I know about it, not in details, but still... I know about the evil deeds of my father. Have you come for revenge? Revenge? One of the bold guys smiled, showing his teeth. And the leader of the red shirt continued, No, of course. We aren't interested in your father that much. He's rather a... mediocre. He thinks the life is about taking everything you can get your hands on. He does everything for his pleasure. And his pleasures, I must say, aren't that sophisticated. Tasty food and showing off his wealth are his pleasures. There are tons of people like that. We have no reason to take revenge upon such people. We rarely even interact with them. We're insisted in you, young man. We see a spark with you, pure and true. A spark that can make a fire. And we want to age you in that. I don't understand, said Roma in a little bit flitching but confident voice. Leonard licked his lips and continued rapturously. I'll explain. I'll explain everything. I bet you remember how Dad used to punch Mom. You were very small, but you do remember it. And what about him yelling at you in the middle of the street despite all the people around? And that time when you told him you wanted to become an artist because you like drawing? Do you remember it? Of course you do. It was just a couple of years ago. There's no way you can just forget it. We would like to make a deal with you. We can easily get rid of your father and nobody will ever know what happened. An accident, let's say. We only need your approval and a sign. Yep, demons, demons, demons. Demons are the demons are basically like we know you've been abused. We know you know he's a bad person. We can make the bad person go away. Your life will be easier. You just need to make a deal. Yep. <laughs> These are demons. Huh? What was that, Adorna? Sometimes with that, demons are, demons are nice. 
<laughs> yeah, but the demons in the story, they make, they trick people into making deals. Yeah, these ones are evil, but pretending to be good. Yeah. And we will happen. Make your revenge happen. I still don't get it. Why would you need a kid's approval? And how are you going to make this happen? Everyone laughed, and the gang leader continued. Your question is an interesting one. We'll make it quick and swift. No one will ever know about it, except you and us. Unless you might feel like telling people about it. An accident in the forest, for example. In the forest? Asked Roma, surprised. Yes, in the forest. Our colleague has a team working in the forest nearby. Am I right? D yep, yep. I remember in the old days story that demons at the hill would make deals in the forest. These are the demons. <laughs> a sleek guy pushes big bold buddy with a shark smile on the side. <coughs> Sorry, we got guy nodded and sent a deep voice. True. I've got boys working nearby. So you aren't from the city? You're local foresters? Asked the boy in surprise. Yeah, foresters. The word fits well, I like it. Right, the foresters. No one could understand he was lied to, but a mix of strong feelings tied his mind with strong intoxication. You just needed to buy some time oh, and get out of here when the time is right. Where is everyone? Why is no one here? Romain attempted to buy some time and brought the, the discussion the first topic you could think of. My great grandma is dying. We're so we're so very upset about it. But if we can make a deal, everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. The man in the red shirt kept persuading the boy. Roma was sincerely surprised by that and asked a straightforward question. You think I want my grand great grandmother dead too? You may not, but now, but now, death is the best gift she can receive," said the leader playfully. What a dick! Roma did not think about what he heard because a thought was born in his head. He slowly walked to the window, looking out it defiantly, thoughtfully, and asked, Are you familiar with my great-grandma? Of course, asked the sleep guy. She's our work related acquaintance. And you have a lot of similarities with her, young man. Your passion towards just justice is worth much to us. Old sins have long shadows, that's what she says often. Something was very fishy about it. How did I Oh, I accidentally wrote that as I'm speaking. Whoops. <laughs> How did I know about his great-grandma if they were mobsters from the city? Foresters working nearby? A gang of mobsters nearby or something like that? The leader interrupted his train of thought. I can see you don't feel like signing the deal. Let's not sink to the level of your father. We'll do as follows. I'll introduce myself. I'm Vasya. When you'll be ready and realize you actually need our help, call me Three times an hour, call. The boy was scared. Much more than before, something unpleasant was moving inside his chest. The torpor was replaced by a shiver throughout his body. The thing Roma could produce out of his mouth was an awkward question. But will you be able to hear me? Of course, said the sleep guy. Me and my co-workers are always nearby. Fear completely reigned the boy and made a decision in a flash. <laughs> I got an achievement. Delivery. Talk to a demon. 
Well, that confirms it. <laughs> Thanks, game. Thanks for confirming it's a demon. <laughs> yeah, I think after we get through the scenario, I'll save and then we'll update Apex. Fear currently reigned the boy and made a decision in a flash. He quickly jumped out the window despite it being short in height and dashed towards Maria's. God damn it! I fucking hate that Discord keeps doing that. Ugh. He quickly jumped you out. Into the grandma's house? Yeah. He quickly jumped out the window despite it being short in height and dashed towards Maria's house. Roman was running as fast as he could. He never entered her house without the parents before. If the situation had been different, he would have been have hesitated for a long time at the porch before knocking or walking in. Now he ran through the old squeaking stair in a flash, but the memory found the door in the dark and opened it, jumping over the doorstep. Alright, it's saved. Let's make sure. Yep, it's right there. Alright. just OBS up and OBS kept crashing so OBS can't handle being open at the same time so mm -hmm. um let's see there's no one to raid as far as I can tell so book from last words we got do you have any last words I mean us throwing is still mean the same chat to downloads Oh, Jerry's gone. Discord killed Jerry. I actually wasn't expecting you to come in this early. <laughs> <laughs> Bookworm. Always read the fine print when you make deals with demons. Is that your final words, book? Oh, no, no, it's fine. Just come on. Come on. Do the deal. <laughs> okay. Adorno, last words for stream. Um. Always do deals with demons. We, we are fun. Yeah. Um. My last words are. Uh, spiky turtle penis. Right. <laughs> oh wait, you can hear me hitting myself. Oh my gosh, it actually still goes through. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see it, but you can hear it. <laughs> Alright, hold on. I'm gonna bonk myself. Good. <laughs> you deserve all of the bong. I love the bits thing now. It's so much fun. Anyways, see you later, Danger Noodles. Hopefully I'll see you later when Apex decides to finish downloading. <laughs> <laughs>